months of blackouts, acute shortages of food and fuel and rising public anger, Sri Lanka's economic crisis is now exploding and there seems to be no end in sight. We at Vyond have been covering the protests from day one. We have been bringing you the reports from the ground and today was no different. We were on the ground covering the protests when the security forces fired tear gas on protesters. Our correspondent Dasuni Athara was caught in the crossfire and before we tell you more, listen in to what she went through. Take a look. Are <laughs> The protest site just turned quite tense as police and security officials just fired tear gas right outside the entrance of the Sri Lankan parliament where reporters including myself and everyone gathered here were just tear gas by the security officers and the people here are angry and agitated but they only have one question. Why are these security officials tear gassing peaceful protesters? A right that is enshrined in Sri Lanka's constitution for peaceful protest. All these people have been asking for the past month is for one simple thing. And that is for the Gotabe Rajpaksa that government to simply step down. And their question is, is this how the security forces of this country try to pacify its people when all they've had is one simple demand? Currently, there is a nationwide strike across Sri Lanka. The bus and train networks ground to a halt. Offices and factories were empty and millions of workers stayed off their jobs. The strike was organized by the country's trade union movement. Protesters are calling for the resignation of the president. But Gotabaya Rajapaksa says that he will not step down. Earlier, the police fired tear gas on students attempting to storm Sri Lanka's parliament. The protesters were led by the Inter-University Students' Federation and they were about to pull down the yellow painted iron barricades when the riot police unleashed a barrage of tear gas. Sri Lanka is dealing with its worst economic crisis since independence. So how did the situation get so bad? There are many reasons for this. First, there was rampant economic mismanagement. And then there were ill-timed tax cuts. And the pandemic was the final nail in the coffin. The government says Sri Lanka may have to endure the crisis for two more years. Currently, the country has less than $50 million in usable foreign exchange reserves. Sri Lanka needs these dwindling reserves to import essential goods and keep the economy ticking. And for more insights on this, our correspondent Dasuni Athara has sent us this report from the heart of the action in Colombo. Take a look. Despite being tear gassed on multiple occasions, the protesters that have gathered outside the Parliament Road barricades continue to stage their protests where they've been here since last night, demanding for President Gotabaya Rajapaksa to simply step down. That's not all. Over 1,000 trade unions across Sri Lanka engage in one of the biggest hartals the country has seen so far. Overall, in proceedings of the Parliament, there appeared to be no concrete solution to either of Sri Lanka's political or economic crisis, as the Parliament was simply adjourned until the 17th of May. Stay with me on as we bring you the very latest of Sri Lanka's developments as and when it happens. Reporting from Colombo, I'm Dasuni Athauta. And for more on the ongoing protests, we were earlier joined by Dr. Aruna Kulatunga, a political analyst from Colombo, and this is what he had to say. Listen in. Basically, the situation today is that the general population, mostly the youth, have lost confidence in the parliament. Uh, they have lost confidence in the government. They want the president to, to resign. And now the uh, call is being intensified, as you have seen with the, the street protests that are going on, uh, to, for the whole of the parliament to resign as well, because for almost uh, a month now, um, this call for a government to change or to, uh, the government to take notice of what is going on at the, um, the rest of the country has been made and it has not been heeded and, and therefore the, the call is now getting very, very intense for the total whole of the parliament or the 225 members to, to, to leave. 
Now, of course, there is a constitutional issue here. Uh, uh, we cannot uh, simply ask the members to leave and, um, and uh, have election. We don't really have the money to have election. So there will, there will be an, an anarchist situation if, if that is to happen. So therefore, the parliament has to do something very, very quickly to, for two things. One is to, uh, to regain the credibility of its own people. And number two, to make do something, and, and that has to be done very urgently as well, to regain the credibility of the country in the uh, face of the economic uh, situation that is there and to get the, the, the money coming back into the country. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.